Mrs. Laura with Dian and Sharp. In this video, I will go through the new features introduced with the release of Sharp Scheduler 2.0. The highlights of the new version are the implementation of pop mail triggers, which allow the user to fire the cron each time an email is received, the ability to use external databases, the ability to schedule tasks for database tables in all three schemas, CV, DBO, and PPL, the refactoring of the actions architecture, the refactoring of the send email action, and last but not least, the repolished UI using material design to be in accordance with some of our other modules like Action Form, Action Grid, and Search Boost. I will go ahead and detail the aforementioned features. Popmail Triggers is a new type of trigger that allows the user to fire the cron each time an email is received. The job will look like this. First of all, we give it a specific name that will help us identify it later. We set up the context portal, which is my website in my case. For triggers, we set up a new trigger, mail, pop mail. I have set mine beforehand. Pop3 server for Yahoo is pop.mail.yahoo.com. We enable use SSL. The username is our actual email address with our password. We set up check interval as desired. And we define the filters that will trigger this job. In my case, the subject of the email must be DNN Sharp and the sender must be notifications at dnnsharp.com. As final action, I will send an email. To trigger this job, I have set up an action form containing a button which is set up to send email on button click. As you can see, in the email action, I have set up from notifications at dnnsharp.com. The address is the one set up in the job, sharp testing at yahoo.ro. And the subject, another filter, is dnnsharp. Therefore, if everything is set up properly, uh, my job should trigger whenever I receive an email in, uh, to that email address. Let us send an email from here. The email was sent. The email has arrived, which means our job should have triggered. If we refresh this page, we should see that it fired just a while ago. This is correct. Next up, the ability to use external databases. Up until this change, Sharp Scheduler used only the portal's database. With this release, we've created a field where we can define a connection string to access an external database. For example, if you want to run an SQL query, uh, the trigger doesn't really matter right now. The SQL query allows us to set up a connection string that will take us to another database. Uh, this is pretty much like uh, the one we have in action form, so it's nothing unusual here. The ability to schedule tasks for tables in all three schemas, CV, DBO, and PPL, is another addition to this build. Before this version, the database triggers were created only with the default option. The changes to allow new database schemas like CV, DBO, and PPL to be used as triggers to schedule tasks. I will add a new job, name new job, context portal, my website, and this trigger we will set database insert. We can see that now in our table name drop down list we have available a CV schema. This is the one I have created beforehand, but you can have a PTO one as well. Another novelty of this release is the fact that Sharp Scheduler supports shared actions. Basically, some unused code, iActionContext, was removed and ActionInfo and ActionContext were modified to match the structure used by ActionGrid. The changes are not visible on the front end, but the functionality is there. And lastly, we have introduced the possibility to send email to all users. 
in our actions we have send email if we set up five email addresses in the two field we can check the send mail to all users box and when the job is fired then the email is sent to all users defined there with all this having been sent we hope you will enjoy the new release and the fruits of our labor Thank you.